Paulina and today Brandon and I are arguing that terminally ill patients should not have the right to physician assisted suicide. So we've broken our argument into two main categories, the medical reasoning which I will be presenting and the moral reasoning which Brandon will be presenting. So our first point is that physician assisted suicide is incompatible with the palliative care. So for those of you who don't know, palliative care is a specialized medical care for people with serious illnesses that focuses on providing relief from symptoms and stress. So it's basically to make someone comfortable when they're terminally ill. And palliative care intends to neither accelerate or postpone death, it just makes them comfortable. And 90% of doctors working in palliative care in Canada oppose physician-assisted suicide, according to the World Health Organization. <coughs> and this is basically because it doesn't go hand-in-hand -hand with physician-assisted suicide and making them comfortable. Our next point is that voluntary physician-assisted suicide violates publicly <coughs> accepted codes of medical ethics. So for doctors, there's an ethics code, and that's just based on morals and what you think is right and wrong and physician-assisted suicide goes against that. So the International Code of Medical Ethics was originally adopted by the World Medical Association in 1949, and it states a doctor must always bear in mind the obligation of preserving human life from the time of conception until death. And they stated in 1992 that assisted suicide, uh, physician-assisted suicide is unethical and must be condemned by the medical profession. So basically it's considered unethical and immoral, so that's one of our main points too. Our third point is that voluntary physician assisted suicide gives too much power to doctors. Uh, it calls for voluntary physician assisted suicide. Um, they've been encouraged by the failure of doctors to provide adequate, or, yeah, adequate symptom control or by providing inappropriate <coughs> medical interventions. So basically, doctors are given too much power because they're the ones prescribing the care to the patients. If a doctor confidently suggests a certain course of action, it can be difficult for a patient to resist. Um, so that's our third point. Our first, fourth point is that physician-assisted suicide wouldn't only be for terminally ill patients. While they say it is, a lot of it is up in the air because the definition of terminal is very broad. Um, Jack Kevorkian spoke with the National Press Club and defined it as any disease that curtails life for even one day. And then there are other laws that define it as death expected within six months. So because the term is so broad, it's difficult to point it into one direction. Also, changes have already been made to extend it to those who aren't just terminally ill. And they define it in ways like hopelessly ill, desperately ill, meaninglessly, or meaningless life. So it extends into depression and other mental disorders. Our fifth point is that physician assisted suicide can become a means of health care cost contaminant. Um, Wesley J. Smith, the Senator Fellow at the Discovery Institute, said that if physician-assisted suicide became widespread, it could become a profit-enhancing tool for big HMOs, which are health maintenance organizations. And basically what happens is drug companies will sell the products, and they it costs very little to make, and then they charge a lot. So it costs $40 to actually perform, uh, to perform the physician-assisted suicide, but they charge around $40,000 to treat the patient and properly do so and give them the choice. Um, legalized physician-assisted suicide raises the potential of a dangerous situation where doctors could profit off someone choosing to end their own life. Um, <coughs> and just to cover the current standings of where it is, uh, physician-assisted suicide is currently legal in four states, Oregon, Vermont, Washington, California, which was already mentioned, and then in Montana, it's court-ordered. And uh, in Oregon, They've already had problems, and it has increased the it's increased the res, both the prescription recipients and the number of deaths. Uh, according to the 2015 data summary, as of January 27th, prescriptions have been written for 1,545 patients, and 991 have died by ingesting the pills or the drugs legally prescribed to them. So to cover what I went over. 
our five main points are that physician-assisted suicide is incompatible with palliative care, that voluntary physician-assisted suicide violates historically accepted codes of medical ethics, that voluntary assisted suicide gives too much power to doctors, that physician-assisted suicide would not only be for people who are terminally ill, that it would extend beyond that, and that physician-assisted suicide can become a means of health care cost.